Today I'd like to go over a quick process on how you can engage or activate your Turnitin account when you access the site directly and then how you can set up a process that you could check your own writing in the Turnitin database or use it as a way for you to check other submissions that aren't tied to a specific class in the Turnitin database. So let's say I want to use Turnitin.com to check some of my own work or do something that is outside of one of the courses that I teach. So if I go to www.turnitin.com and I click on the login icon over here on the right. Um, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to indicate that I've forgotten my password because in theory, Turnitin has actually created an account for me that's associated with Canvas. So it's going to have my Toro email address in it. The problem is, is that normally we access Turnitin through Canvas and we don't access it directly from the Turnitin website. So to access it directly from the Turnitin website, we need to essentially create an account here. But one has already been created for us, so we basically just have to gain access to that account. So the way in which I would gain access to it is I just click on the Forgot Your Password here. And it's going to ask me for my email address, and it's going to ask me for my family name, my last name, my surname. And then I can just click on Next. So as you can see here now, the link to reset my password has been sent to my email address. So I'm going to go over to my email address here now and I'm just going to check it and there it is, reset my password. So um, I can just click uh, the click here option or if that's not working, I can just copy and paste this URL here into the message. So I'm going to click here and it's asking me for my password so I'm going to create a new password and then I'm going to click next and that will uh, essentially do it for me so now I can log in directly with my Toro information and with the new password I just created click login and all of the classes that I teach or that I'm enrolled in in some way, shape, or form should all be here. Now, if I wanted to create something that would allow me to just run my own papers through, what I want to do is I can click on Add a Class. And I can create it just as a standard class. This is going to be my manuscripts is what I'm just going to call it. You can call it whatever you would like. The enrollment key really doesn't matter at this stage. Essentially, if you were having students join this particular um, this particular class so that they could submit things through here, then you would want to use the enrollment key and then whatever you wrote here. So if I was setting this up, so say I had a research group and I wanted my research group all to be able to access this so that they could submit things here to check the grammar and check for plagiarism and that kind of thing uh, on their own then I would put in an enrollment key and I can make it whatever I'd want I could make it my surname one two three um, I could make it you know my research group I could even make it Barber's research group, you know, you can have whatever you would like here. In my case, I'm just going to put my manuscripts. Now, you need to put something there because you'll see there's a little key right there. So that little asterisk means I need something in there. Um, but it doesn't, if you're the only person that's going to be using it, it doesn't matter what you have in here. The only criteria that you have to remember is that the enrollment key must be between 8 and 12 characters. So I'm just going to go here now with Barber123 as my enrollment key as we continue our way down the criteria here. 
Um, the subject area is really it's entirely up to you. Um, you can put in whatever you would like here. Again, if it's just for your benefit, um, you know, you don't, that's entirely your um, sort of decision on that. Uh, so here, uh, let's see, I'm just going to say again, it's just for my benefit, so it doesn't matter what I put in for student level. So I'm just going to select graduate. The class start date will be generated based upon whatever the date is today. And then for the end date, again, if you're going to be just doing it yourself, I would go in and pick whatever the most, the furthest to date into the future that they will let you pick. So for me right now, doing this in on November 15th, uh, the most furthest date that it'll give me in the future is April 2020, which I guess is about 18 months from now. So I'm going to pick the end of that month because that's the furthest that I can do and click Submit. And now you'll see that I've got a class ID in here. I've got an enrollment key as it does done and my class has been created. So I'm going to click on Continue and you can see there's a class there called My Manuscripts. And now I can go in and just add an assignment. And in my case, what I'm going to just do is to create essentially a single assignment and I'm also going to call that my manuscripts because that's just a place that I want um, for it to, um, you know, for my own manuscripts to go. And in terms of a due date, I'm going to pick as far into the future as I can, which doesn't look to be all that far, to be honest with you. Oh, let's do this then. It'll allow me to go right up to, actually, quite a distance. So in my case, since they made me close the class on... April 2020, that's what I'm going to do. So let's make it due available at 18 2020 and the start date is right now. And in terms of the optional settings, uh, what I want to make sure that I do is I want to, let's see, I can allow submissions after the due date. Sure. Similarity report. Yes, I'd like a similarity report and I'd like it immediately. Um, and I want to exclude the bibliographic stuff. I want to exclude the quoted materials. Uh, I don't want to exclude small sources. Um, it doesn't matter if I want students to see similarity reports or not because I'm not going to, this is for me to use, not for them. Um, I want to enable the translation matching so that if I do quote translated material, that's good. The important thing is I want to make sure that I do not store my papers because again this is just for me so I don't want to submit the my papers to a particular repository because if the journal I was submitting them to were to run it through a service like Turnitin then the draft that I submitted if I had it go to a repository would show up so I want to make sure I have no repository here so I'm going to check it against all of those things I'm going to enable the grammar check and I want to use both US and UK dictionaries. I want to include all of those things and I want this to be the default. So I'm just going to click submit. So now I've got a place here that I can submit papers to. And one of the nice things is over here in the more actions, you'll see there's an option to submit. So now I can submit my own manuscripts to turn it in and allow the service to check for the plagiarism, check for the grammar, and use that for my own personal papers. Okay, and that was a quick video looking at how you can use Turnitin to check your own manuscripts or check any manuscripts that aren't associated with a particular course.